Hello, is my voice audible? Yeah, it's audible. Good evening, everyone. It is a great pleasure for Robotics and Automation Society of DJ Sangvi College of Engineering, Mumbai, to welcome you to this workshop on Robotics Operating System, ROS. Wishing all the participants a warm welcome today and a special welcome to our mentor who is going to host this workshop, Mr. Pranshu Tople, who has worked as a robotics engineer at Honest AgTech and Techno Yantra. Immense experience in the robotics environment, Mr. Tople is the co-founder and product developer of the University App Scholar. Adding to this, he is also the co-founder of Rick Bittel Labs. This workshop will not only give you enough knowledge, but also hands on experience. Also, if you have any doubts, uh, you may raise your hand and we will unmute you or you can ask your questions in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Pranjo, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, I am Pranshu and in today's workshop, it is going to be a like one-to-one -one interaction with everybody, okay? So, if you have any doubts, you can stop me in between, okay? And if you have any questions, freely ask him, okay? Don't be scared or anything such, okay? So, let's start with first my introduction. So, in the starting itself, they gave a lovely introduction. But I will just uh, like give you in short description that I'm a 22 year old mechatronics engineer as well as a robotic enthusiast. I've been a winner of 20 plus national as well as international robotics competitions and hackathons. Uh, I have interned at HL, which is like the company which manufactures uh, fighter aircrafts for Indian Air Force. And currently I'm working on my own startup, which is Rigbetal Lab, where we are uh, consulting people into the field of robotics automation and uh, machine learning computer vision etc and i love to share my learnings and that's the reason i also have my youtube channel where i uh, sometimes upload videos about ROS and robotics and things that i have learned from industry so that it's accessible for everyone so and even that's the reason why i'm here for this workshop because i love to share whatever i learn Able, like uh, skill in all these sectors is just because uh, when you are a robotics engineer you have to be very precise in mechanical designing electronics as well as computers so one by one you learn each and every skill and that's the reason i have grown my skills this many times but in this workshop i will be showing you how uh, i did my journey and how even you can be skilled in so many uh, sectors as well as be uh, focused in one sector okay so let's move ahead. So let's start with a general question that what is a robot? So Karan, can we unmute your participants if they want to answer any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, sure. So uh, if anyone wants to answer this question, what is a robot? They can raise their hand. Come on, guys. Uh, don't <laughs> Robot is something which can display intelligent behavior. Okay, display intelligent behavior. That is a really nice explanation. Is there anyone else who wants to come up with a better explanation? Uh, a robot is something which can follow a set of commands. Okay, very nice. So, set of commands. Anything else? Robot is a robot. Uh, just if a robot. A robot. Yeah, you are saying something. Go ahead. Yeah, I said uh, the robot is a device which makes 
a human walk easy a human walk easy that's really nice okay so uh, like keeping into consideration all the statements that you all gave okay so let's move ahead and see so tell me is this a robot does it follow set command instruction does it yes. make human life easy yes sir uh, can you tell why why did you say yes sir it was commanded to clean earth or of all the things in the movie so it is following that and it is making human life easy because humans are don't have to go and clean all the scrap from earth mm-hmm. that's really nice it's really perfect okay so now tell me is this a robot is this making life easy no no oh why not it's following a set command instruction it is following the command to kill all humans but sir so that is the command sir, <laughs> so that's commands are not ethical no we required uh, a robot which uh, who will follow the ethical commands only not destructive or any harmful command for you okay okay fine that's a good point okay so we will come to that point again later on okay and my last question is this a robot so when tori so is not inside it it can act like one okay and what if tony stark is inside it then at that time it's not a robot no so it's more like an armor yes. which mm-hmm. which basically tony is controlling manually mm, right okay so again we will come to this point later on in this presentation okay that was a really nice explanation so so isn't it still a robot as it's still replicating human like movements and human like expressions mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Even that's a good point. So that's the reason I'm saying uh, let's uh, get to this point later on in the presentation. Okay, that's a really good point that it's replicating human-like behavior. It's replicating human-like emotion. So let's see further on what is exactly a robot. So before uh, getting to the point that what is robot, let's understand the history of robot. Like what, where this word robot came from. So this word robot or robotics came from a. Uh, a play in 1920s written by a zek writer carol capek okay so he wrote a play uh, the name of the play was rodham's universal robot okay r u r was the name of the play and in that um, there were some mechanical labors okay so just like we have kamwali bhais and everybody at our home to do our, our work or there are some labors on construction site so similarly uh, in zek hello uh, in the zek hello yes panchu hi chaitanya here okay hi chaitanya uh, the screen is uh, screen is blur uh, is coming uh, to uh, some blurish uh, please see to it uh, can you get join to better internet connection maybe that can be the thing no it's a uh, better connect it's on, it's on wifi it's on our 15 mbps per speed uh, i think uh, i am on linux Okay. Uh, everybody else, are you able to see screen properly or is it blurred? It's, it's visible. Blurred. Blurred. It's visible. Blurred. Blurred. I suggest you to blurred. join the YouTube. It's blurred. Blurred. Okay. Okay. Blurred. So, because. Okay. Fine. Just a minute. Okay, I've connected to the LAN connection, so maybe it will improve over time. It's blurred. Okay, it it may take some time to like load everything, so just hold on. It will increase over time. Okay, and there is no like proper words to see. It is okay if you don't see the words. Just listen to me. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, sir, it's better now. Okay, okay. Just a minute. Yeah. so uh, let's get to, to our point so in the zek language the word robota means forced labor so if you are forcing anyone to do some work it is uh, known as robota and from that word robota this uh, word came which is named as robot okay so it originated from there and later on 
uh, in later on so in the year 1954 before that it was just a sci-fi thing that people used to see in plays and uh, some movies or something like that but in 1954 uh, there was first industrial robot was made whose uh, who it was made by universal automation okay and it was used in companies to like mm, do set uh, commands like a repetitive task this robot used to do it and later on as uh, technology increased then came puma 560 which was the birth of modern robots you can say because uh, this was the like even you can see this kind of robot is currently used in industries today so this came in later in 1978 so it took us these many years to like almost 24 uh, almost 24 25 years to like advance to modern robotics and this puma was short form of programmable universal machine for assembly okay the puma p u m a programmable universal machine for assembly okay and later in 1980s there was a, a rapid growth in this robotics industry because once puma came then everybody got uh, like understood like what all things can be done with robot how easy it is to manipulate robot and then it gave birth to different types of robot so it gave birth to scara robots which are like a one uh, like in they were planar robot but in that they were very fast and quick action then there were insight robot was made which was the first robot with a camera on board so before that it was just pre programmed but insight robot had a camera so it can uh, see what is around the robot and then it can uh, pick up things and do specific tasks and later on barrett robot was the first robot with a a uh, finger like structure to grab things okay uh, so just hold on a minute Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, sorry for the disturbance. So yeah, coming to the point. Uh, so this Barrett uh, manipulator was the first robot which had finger-like structure to grab over the things. Okay. So after 1980s, so people got into advanced robotics, and from 1995. to present the all there were small robots there were mobile robots and there were many companies rising which were working in the field of robotics even boston dynamics robots that you see today it was uh, started in 1998 or something around those years okay so there were many emerging companies in the field of robotics after 1995 and even nasa in 2003 they started their mars exploration project where they launched two robots over to mars which were named as uh, opportunity and uh, one more i don't remember the exact name but they launched two rovers on to mars and even after that they launched many rovers and maybe you might be knowing the recent rover whose name was perseverance landed on mars so these gave birth to modern robotics where robots were used at places where human couldn't go and they can do task for humans okay and now this uh, as the technology increased so these are the robots that you see in day to day life so self driving ro- uh, self driving cars can be termed as robots because they are making human life easy they can see around their uh, environment and they could drive themselves okay so just like any mars rover can drive itself similarly self driving cars uh, can be also termed as robots and then uh, there was also rise in humanoid like robots the robots that could uh, that were able to look like humans that had hands legs and that could walk you might have seen these robots in the boston dynamics videos 
So as I showed, uh, self-driving cars are the recent examples of uh, robots. Boston Dynamics spot robot with a robot arm. So these are some advanced robots. And this is like a well-known robot, Sophia, uh, which is like a humanoid robot that can speak to the uh, person and it could see the person. It, and now, right now, it can even draw people in, sitting in front of her. So she is getting capabilities and updates. And nowadays, robots are becoming more and more like humans. But one thing that differs robots from a human is obviously the emotion. They don't have any emotion. So as the technology is increasing, just so that we don't uh, like make robots that are um, as superior as humans, that's the reason three laws of robotics were invented. So these were invented in late 80s uh, by a scientist named as Isaac Asimov. Okay, so he introduced these three laws, and uh, the, these three laws says that a robot may not injure a human being, or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Okay, so just like uh, in the previous discussion that we had about the Terminator, it was injuring a human being. So it is against the law of robotics. Okay, so uh, the robot shouldn't do it. The second law says that a robot must obey its orders given by a human, except such orders would conflict with the first law. So what does this mean? Is if I tell a robot to kill uh, an enemy of mine, the robot shouldn't do it. Okay, this robot shouldn't do it on his own. So uh, even if because it will harm the first law, because it will harm a human being. So that's how these two laws are interconnected. And there is one more connection to these laws, which is the third law. It says a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first and second law. So like if a robot is falling from a height, okay, it should try to protect itself by like uh, rolling itself or by if it has parachute by opening a parachute or something like that. But uh, Let's consider that a, ro a robot is falling on a human being. So it would, it should try to uh, not harm the human being. So it should change its trajectory or something like that. But um, it should not harm the human being. So it is all, all these three laws are interconnected. And whenever you are working on modern robotics with artificial intelligence, these are the three laws which are taken into consideration, highly taken into consideration. So if you were a robotic engineer in the year 2000, these laws might have not uh, like affected you. But right now, all the emerging engineers are taught these three laws and each and every robotic application you implement, you have to keep these into consideration. Okay. So now after all this uh, discussion, back to the initial question that is this a robot? Okay. So uh, are there any new answers to this? Mm, question Is this a robot? Yes, it is a robot. Anyone? It is a robot. Why? Not a robot. It, uh, it is supporting a human inside to get him super strong. Uh -huh. So that way it is a robot. Because even a pneumatic. Mm -hmm. Them, yeah, implanted in a human being makes the specific organ of the implant a robotic part of their body. It can't be it, it is it is robot. But it is harming a human being, right? Hello. It is harming the yeah. villain in, hello. Yes. Yeah, I think it depends on which suit you're talking about. First of all, okay. because <laughs> uh, <laughs> because after Mark Seven, uh, the 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 suit could actually you know move on its own. Now, the way I see uh -huh. it, uh, a robot is built for the purpose of automation, correct? Uh -huh. so, yeah. so, so, using commands, it could automate. Unfortunately, maybe it was not bound by the laws of robotics, as you mentioned right here, but it was controlled by the mm -hmm. AI charts. Okay, okay. So, here you termed, uh, like, you said a term which was automation. I was yeah. exactly looking for this term. Okay. So, uh, Automation. So this eventually this is not a robot. Okay, it is a machine. Okay, and people get a lot confused between the term robot and automation. So let's understand what is the difference between a robot and the automation. Okay. So uh, 
automation is like a machinery designed to carry out specific tasks like a bottle filling machine or a dishwasher or even your washing machine at your home okay uh, even you can consider microwave as an automation because it automatically heats up your uh, food or something like that right but a robot is a machinery designed to carry out variety of tasks so it can pick up place uh, it base can be pick and place of robot arms mobile robots that move around the warehouse as well as like cnc machines also known as like computer numerical control machines so like 3d printer all these are robots so what the main difference between these two are is automation is one specific task and you only have to do that if you go at a washing machine fully automatic washing machine it only washes your clothes if tomorrow if you just put your um, dishes into the washing machine it won't act like a dishwasher right but when it comes to robots robots are designed in a way so that they can do multiple tasks okay so let's consider tesla tesla can buy a robot arm and use that robot arm to manufacture a car today but maybe tomorrow they can use the same robot arm just uh, code it a little bit different and the same robot arm can be used for painting the cars okay so the, the robot is same but the task that the robot is doing is different so this is what there is a difference between automation and robotics automation is related to just one specific task but robot can do multiple tasks okay and also robots don't uh, of, uh, every time needs human intervention maybe in automation there is some in human intervention like yeah uh, it get it needs to be verified or checked by a human being to start or there should be some quality control but in robots the robot itself can have the quality control capability in two okay. so now Hello, sir yes go on uh, so there is a uh, question in the chat based on the law of uh, robotics that you explained uh, so robots can't be used in army and uh, it is conflicting with first and second law uh, so when yeah, harsha has asked is, this yeah that is, this is a really good question so the robots that are used in army so those are not self driving robots those, those robots don't have their own brain those robots are like used as machines okay so whenever these uh, court cases arises for military robots these are not termed as robots but these are termed as machines those that thing it is said that army person is controlling that machine so iron man is a machine controlled by a person so each and every action that is being performed by that robot or machine is the responsibility of the person who is controlling it. does that answer your question yes hello yes sir so even though they say it's robots just to get attraction of media but whenever there are court cases these are termed as machines and not robots because there is a person behind it controlling that okay so now let's in, look at the essential characteristics of robots so what all things a robot should have okay so the first thing that a robot should have is mobility like it should have the ab ability to move around move around the surrounding or let's say even um, just um, stretch its arm over a 1 meter or something like that as a robot arm but it should have movement so that's the first thing the robot should have second thing comes the programmability okay the robot should be able to reprogram just so that it can be used in some other task so just like i said previously Uh, automation machine you cannot modify it a little uh, like a little bit and use it for some other task but robots should have that programmability so that we can reprogram it and we can use it for some other task the third thing is sensors so each robot should be aware of its surrounding the robot should be able to understand like uh, what all things are around the robot and if let's say if it has to pick up any big huge car part okay so it should understand where is that car part and then it should pick that up and how will it pick it up so it should have the mechanical capability so it should have the capability to pick up things so it should have gripper over it or uh, let's say if the robot has to move 
So at that time, it should have mechanical capability in the form of V so that it can be moved. And last thing is flexibility. So just like I mentioned previously, the robot should be flexible enough to use at various places. Just making one robot for one specific task is not enough. One robot should be flexible enough to do various other tasks. So these are five essential characteristics of a robot. Am I clear? Okay, Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, do we consider autonomy a, a characteristic of a robot, as you previously mentioned in the military robot case? It, it, uh, autonomy in the sense, are you saying like autonomously detecting a person? Is it so? Yes, sir. I mean, able to decide its own actions. Yes, yes. Able to decide its own action, that is uh, autonomy, automation. But not every robot should have an automation. System, okay, but some robots have it. I will come to that point later on. Okay. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so military robots are not autonomous because if let's say if you program it to just shoot a person, it can shoot an hostage as well. So those robots are manual robots. But there are some robots that make their own decisions. Okay. So I will come to that point later on. But that is achieved using programmability. So that is the characteristic of the robot because it is being programmed to do so. So let's move ahead. Okay. So let's compare uh, the robot to a human body, like how everything works in a robot. So just like we humans have food. Okay. Similarly, the robot also needs power supply to do something. Okay. To do any task, it needs power. That is the main thing that is there in robot. And uh, just like uh, observe these arrows going properly. Okay. So power supply is then. Uh, sent to three important things which are sensor controllers and motor okay so just like when we eat food it gets digested and all the nutrients are spread all over the body so you can consider the nutrients is given to eyes so that they can see around the nutrients is given to brain so that it can function and similarly the nutrients are given to muscles so that they can act so here this eyes brain and motors sorry and muscles are referred to sensors on the robot uh, the controller of the robot which is the thinking machine of the robot or where the processing happens and next is the motor okay and now uh, once power supply is given to all these three uh, components then what it does is the sensor which can be a camera or there can be some ir sensor or some other kind of sensor it takes data from the surrounding and it sends to the controller. So just like our uh, eyes see what is going around and sends the data to our brain. So similarly, the sensory data of a robot is sent to the controller. And what it does is the controller processes it. Okay, let's say if our eyes see that mom is running, uh, like going to hit us. Okay, so the brain processes that and it moves and like it starts running. Okay, it tells the legs to run away so that we don't get hit. Similarly, uh, once the data is processed, the controller sends the data to motors to move the robot. Okay, but only moving one robot, uh, sorry, one motor is not sufficient. If you want to do complex uh, tasks, you have to be, uh, you have to control a set of, uh, you have to control a set of motors, and these different motors are connected to each other using linkage. So you can consider linkage as like the bones of your robot. Okay how the bones are connected to each other and together they work the skeleton of the human being. So similarly, linkages are the skeleton of a robot. And in all this scenario, okay, let's say sometime uh, we, feel, we feel something, okay, so sometime there is an external effect. So our brain tells that, okay, you have to study or you will get failed, okay. That is what our brain tells. But there are some feelings like sometimes we feel sad, so we don't study. So that is an external factor which is affecting the actual command. So here that external factor is called as user interface. And this way works both ways. Okay, so you can consider our heart as the user interface. So the feelings that we get is are the external factors that are affecting the commands of a controller. So you can, uh, did you understand 
how this key components of the robots are connected to the key components of human being are there any doubts in this no thank you no doubts okay so let's move ahead so uh, you, you have understood what are the key components of robots okay now let's move ahead with like uh, how exactly robots are made and what are the things that comes into consideration while designing a robot or while making a robot okay so just a disclaimer like uh, today's session will be a theoretical based session and after tomorrow we will get into ros installation and then we will do some practical but don't get bored of these things because this is important when you are applying for a robotics job or if you are working as a robotics engineer these things are the essential part and it must be known by each and every robotics engineer okay even i used to get bored in colleges when i used to learn all these things but here i have tried to connect it to real life examples and make it interesting for you okay so yeah let's get with the mechanical elements used in robots so as i told robot needs to do specific tasks like it should move its arm it should uh, like it should move around so how all these things are done is using mechanical components so if you want to move a robot front and back or a robot hand front and back so at that time gear and pinion mechanisms are used or some combination of gears are used okay uh, similarly if you want to move the wheels of the robot then chain and sprockets are used if you want to pick and place something that time lever mechanism is used if you want to extend anything like these kinds of robots are used in um, warehouses where they have to reach at certain height so they use linkage mechanism so that they can uh, or it's also called as scissor lift mechanism so that the robot can reach at specific heights okay so these are some mechanical components that are responsible for making a robot so the first thing as a robotic engineer is to think of how robot should work and how, what are the key components like what are the key elements so that that builds up the whole robot okay and once you uh, like plan out what are the key elements then uh, we also know, uh, must consider what are the robots or what are the types of robots according to the control so now let's consider you have designed a robot but now you have to choose whether the robot should be a manual robot or an autonomous robot okay so as i told previously those are manual robots are considered as machines okay but in some cases these are also robots just because they have sensors on board they have uh, let's say they can sense their surrounding and it helps it makes a person easier to control it so just like a tesla car it can drive on itself but having a human being is like a additional benefit or let's say if, if a tesla car fails to detect an uh, obstacle in front of it so at that time the person has to uh, push the emergency brake and the, uh, there is a manual override for that so in that case it comes into the manual robot but autonomous robots have their own thinking capability so previously someone asked this question like uh, they do they have thinking capability so uh, the thinking capability comes into the autonomous robot okay and yeah, yeah. the different hello is there any question uh no sir sorry for the disturbance okay okay no problem so this was according to control but according to the type of how robot move there are tons and tons of types of robots okay so let's say a robot which doesn't move from its base so these are stationary robots but uh, what type of robots there are cartesian robots there are cylindrical spherical robot we will come to this point later on but uh, depending upon how it moves they are classified into these types okay and uh, why are these ro robots because let's say there is a cartesian robot uh, if we add a 3d printer nozzle to it it can 3d print things if we add a laser to it it can laser cut things if we add a plasma cutter or a water jet to it it can cut metals so the same robot is able to do multiple tasks 
that's the reason they are considered into robots then if a robot is able to move if it's moving using wheel there can be a single wheel robot so this is very similar to the star wars robot bb8 droid okay then there are two wheel robots three wheel robots four wheel six wheel and even tracked wheel and tracked robots which have treads on it then comes legged robots i guess most of you have seen these things as they are trending nowadays but apart from these robots there are also swimming robots okay so there are fish like robots that can swim underwater and they can, they are used for underwater exploration because first submarines were used for underwater uh, exploration but then the underwater fishes used to get scared of submarine and marine biologists won't used to analyze those things they made robots that were able to look like fishes then there are flying robots Uh, which look like bird there are robotic balls and uh, soon these robotic balls will be also mm, sent to mars because if they are in the form of ball they are easy to go uh, like they are very fast and they can go anywhere but whenever they want they can expand into legs and then it can walk like a spider so these are very mm, flexible kind of robots okay and there are also some robots which work together so those are called as swarm robots so just like ants and bees they work together to do a specific task similarly these swarm robots work together and do a specific task so have you guys uh, recently seen a post from china where they have used multiple drones and those drone uh, drones used to form a position of a qr code and then you can scan that qr code have you guys seen that photo it's been like very viral on social media so those that's the drones... yes. new marketing strategy na no? yes right 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 so those drones were called as swarm drones because they used to work together so one single drone cannot do anything over there but all these drones came together and they were able to achieve one specific task so that is called swarm robots okay and there are tons of other robots okay so now let's get into the uh, performance matrices of the robot okay so whenever uh, like when we work on industrial projects a specific uh, company comes with a problem statement okay they come with a problem statement saying that they have to build a robot that could do specific certain number of tasks and that can be anything it can be picking up a barrel or picking up boxes from logistics department or uh, like welding a car or maybe some manufacturing related thing it can be anything so how will you design this robot like what will be the things that you should co- keep into consideration while building these robots so mm, there are certain questions that you ask to the client who gives you these uh, things okay so if a client come to you and says i want this this type of robot So you should ask a certain number of questions first question is what is the working volume so in what area in how much area does the robot should move okay or the robot should be able to move around or work around this is called as working volume so here you can see there are robots so this is a cartesian robot uh, this robot can only move in x y and z direction in a straight line okay it can go side by side it can go uh, forward and backward and it can go up and down but in a straight line itself the working volume of this robot is cuboid okay and if you ask where these robots are used so the first common use thing is they are used in 3d printers and laser cutters but apart from that these are used uh, like huge machines like these are used in dockyard so uh, all the picking up and placing of trailers these are used on by cartesian robots okay i um, i will show you a video of it
So do you see this robot? So see, it can go forward, backward, left, right, and up and down. And now here, it's like uh, making a robotic, uh, uh, automobile part, I guess it's making an engine. So this is a smaller Cartesian robot, but there are also huge Cartesian robots I guess. Uh, I guess the video is on YouTube, I'll search it on YouTube. Yeah, so see, these are huge robots that, that comes into manual robots, but these are used to pick up and place from ships and it placed on these autonomous robots. So these uh, truck looking kind of things, those are completely autonomous, okay? There is no human controlling it. They are just told that you have to uh, like uh, undock a ship. So they work day and night autonomously. So there are tons of cameras that are used for doing this. So these robots cannot move in all directions, it's just three X, Y, Z directions. That's the reason they are called as uh, Cartesian robots. Similarly, there are cylindrical kind of robots. So it can go up and down and it can rotate around its way. It can only do these two things. So if you want to uh, make a robot that can pick something from one level and place it on other level, that time you can use cylindrical robots. It is widely used in industries for pick and placing. Very simple things, okay? Like cylindrical robot arm. Mm. So this is a more advanced one with five axis. So you can see it's going uh, forward and backward as well. You are able to see the video, right? Uh, yes, sir, we are able to see the video, uh, but it's just a bit blurry. Okay, okay. Mm, it's streaming over Wi Fi, so maybe that's the issue. Sir, so it's a little delayed also. Okay. That's not an issue. Like, even if it's delayed, it's okay. Mm. Yeah. So that was under cylindrical robot. Similarly, if a robot can also rotate on its own axis, so that is uh, that becomes a sphere of the working volume. So that is called a spherical robot. And each of these robots, you can say, are getting their name from the workspace or the work volume they can work around. Okay, that's the reason work volume is the first question that you should ask to your client, like uh, if you want to design a robot. Okay. Uh, and why is it work volume so important? Okay, if you see, see this articulated robot, it can go everywhere. So why not to use every time this same robot? Because uh, as the robot has more movement, the robot has more motors, and the more number of motors turns out to be like making the robot more expensive. And each and every time, uh, your client doesn't have enough budget. So in uh, whatever budget you get, in that you have to design a robot that is most efficient, okay, or most effective to use. So sometimes you can just get away with two degrees of freedom with just a cylindrical robot. But you should be able to know about that. Okay? that that's the reason uh, we are keeping this into consideration. Okay. Now let's get into next thing, which is speed and acceleration. Uh, so someone has a question. Uh... They are only moving in linear paths. Uh, I'm not sure what he's talking about. Uh, if you could unmute yourself and ask yourself only. Yes, please ask the question. Hello. Yes. Yeah, you are audible. Yes, I was asking about the Cartesian robot video that was being shown to the so yes. that's why I asked that they are only moving in linear paths, sir. Yes, yes, right. And that's the reason they are called Cartesian robots, okay? So Cartesian robot can only move in linear path. And that's the reason the workspace is like a uh, cuboidal workspace. 
there are no curves or anything but in all other robots they can move in curvature path and that's the reason they are creating these curves okay so whenever okay. like uh, because if you manufacture a huge robotic arm to unload things from a ship it will be very expensive <laughs> maybe it's not even possible to create a robot arm for that so that's the reason cartesian robots are used over there okay next thing i said that is speed and acceleration okay so what is the difference between speed and acceleration so uh, the speed is termed as a, it is limited by the task of the robot so sometimes it is like when a robot is doing welding okay it cannot be very fast it can just go like this in one second it can weld everything even the robot is able to move that fast but welding won't happen because in welding you have to melt those two metals so that they can fuse it together even in cutting if you are cutting anything just moving your robot arm very fast won't work you have to wait until it's cut properly so you must keep speed into consideration sometimes going slow is better and if you are going slow then that is very good on your budget because uh, like less fast motors are cheaper than the more fast motors okay also uh, it varies depending upon the position of the load so let's say if you want to pick up something uh, from your hand okay it's uh, from your uh, hand which is very close to your body so you can pick it up very easily but if you extend your arm at a very long point and if the same load is given to you it becomes difficult for you just because uh, because of like torque and uh, the fulcrum changes its position so in that case you have to also consider the speed because if you increase the speed then you can just uh, you will throw that object to a very certain height you don't want that you have to keep that into consideration and usually if you move the robot very fast it decreases the resolution which comes to the third point so resolution is like mm, just like we have resolutions on your tv screen or a monitor phone what is the resolution it's like the number of pixels that you can see like uh, one pixel shows you red color the other pixel shows you green and the other pixel shows you blue apart from these three colors you cannot show something else on a pixel right you cannot divide it into half and say half may red dikhao and half may blue dikhao you cannot do that so it's like the smallest uh, thing that you can display similarly in robot it's the smallest step a robot can take it can be 1 mm sometimes it can be like 1/10th of an mm okay it can be as precise as that but if your robot is going very fast it is very uh, difficult to achieve that level of precision right so that level of resolution so uh, speed and resolution are, are always inversely proportional if speed is high then the resolution is low if the resolution is high then the speed is low okay after these three points comes to two most important points that are like uh, most confusing points in the robot designing plan okay which is accuracy and repeatability so many people get confused in these two terms which is accuracy and repeatability so accuracy is like the difference between actual position of the robot and the program position of robot so if i am saying to a robot to go at 2 uh, meters from here and if the robot goes like 2.5 meters by mistake so it is not accurate if the robot goes 2.1 meter yeah it is close to uh, that actual point but ha huh, how much close the robot is to the actual point is called as accuracy and second thing is repeatability like uh, how uh, like maximum time does the robot go at the same place okay so uh, here i have a graph showing the same thing so here i have graph it says here it's low accuracy and here it's high accuracy and similarly here is high repeatability and here is low repeatability so let's say if i tell a robot arm to go over this blue square but each and every time it goes somewhere here so here uh, you can see that the uh, every time the robot is going at the similar position every time 
so this is like the high repeatability but the accuracy is low because it is far from the object okay so this area is low accuracy but high repeatability then comes over here which says high accuracy and low repeatability so here we are close to the real object where we have to go we are close to that but every time yeah is there any question okay uh, so here every time the robot arm is close to the object uh pranshu sir you are muted i guess uh, can you please unmute yourself oh sorry am i audible now uh yes sir hello yes yes we are audible now oh. okay uh when did i get muted till where did you hear just now just uh, just one like a uh, few seconds below before okay 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 so do let me know if it happens again okay uh, so yeah so here we see that the repeatability was high because the robot was going at the same place again and again but the accuracy was low because it was far from the but here the robot is uh, close to the actual position but every time it's going at a different place so the repeatability is low it's not repeating itself again and again but accuracy is can say it close to high okay and this is the area which we want to achieve where each and every time the robot is going at the same place and it is accurate also so this area is highly accurate as well as highly repeatable okay so we want to always achieve this position and this is a place where we don't want to go ever okay where the accuracy is also low and the repeatability is also low here the robot goes to random places every time so it's not repeating its movement so it's low repeatability and even it's not going close to the object so the accuracy is also low did you guys understand this concept are there any doubts in this concept any doubt yes sir i'm sure voice was not audible properly can you No, no doubt. I guess he said uh, no doubt. Yeah. Okay, okay. Tejas, Tejas here suggested that uh, we can use particle filter. Yes, yes. Sir. So exactly. So uh, like every time you make a robot, you don't usually get this output. Okay, you can get any of these. So your motive when you are getting this is to increase your high accuracy. And if you are getting this, then you have to go over here. so for you uh, going from this area to this area or maybe from here to here uh, we usually use some filters we usually do some coding if this is happening so that means uh, there is some error in your robot there is some x and y error so if you give that error so your robot will go at the proper point so there are some particle uh, particle filters that you apply that's exactly right okay so now uh, let's see what are some of uh, where are robotic uh, robots used and what are the robotic tasks okay so robots are being used for space exploration uh, and then chemical spill clean up and disarming bomb so these are the places where there is dangerous for a robot uh, for a human to go okay so for this specific task robots are used okay apart from that uh, there are some tasks where every time you have to do the same task or it can be repetitive or boring like welding car frames or picking and placing something uh, some same thing again and again so at that time robot arms are used or any robot kind of robots is used and the third thing is where high precision or high speed is needed so high speed like uh, for electronics manufacturing or electronic testing there are tons of mobile phones that are being manufactured daily so each and every mobile phone should be very accurate for testing as well as as well as for manufacturing so their robots are used and surgery where you have to go slow their speed is not the issue but 
but precision is a really high issue over there so at that time robots are used okay just give me a minute yeah so uh, this is the timeline and overall expectations that uh, we keep from our robot or something like uh, whenever we design a robot this is the road map that we follow okay so let's consider we are uh, taking a mobile robot uh, that will be used in a uh, factory okay so there there are three stages that we need to go through first is locomotion so the robot should be able to move around okay that's the first thing that you should know second thing is perception so perception like avoiding all the obstacles that are around the robot like it should be aware of the surrounding it should be aware of the complete warehouse and third thing is navigation so once it is aware of the surrounding and aware of the warehouse it should navigate around in the warehouse using localization it should be able to create a map using mapping method and also it should plan its own path <clears throat> so there are some path planning methods around uh, in ross which helps you for path planning okay and how should we achieve this so firstly as we mentioned all the mechanical aspects okay so first you have to design the uh, robot in a cad file okay using computer aided design the second thing is you have to come con uh, convert that cad file into urdf which is also known as universal robot description format okay so what does this have is it has all the physical parameters that are being used in robots like its friction its uh, inertia its volume its mass all the physical parameters of the robot are being included into urdf of the robot okay once that is done then uh, we do some basic testing on the robot like tele operation so we will be able to control the robot uh, control the robot remotely from anywhere using tele operation okay uh, and next thing is to implement slam so slam stands for simultaneous localization and mapping so in this case uh, the robot also understands in what position it is and uh, it also creates the map of the surrounding so that is uh, uh, that is meant by slam okay we will see it later on in a demo session and lastly it uh, we will be also uh, looking at the navigation implementation okay so the robot should move in the surrounding by itself so uh, that is the point uh, what we have to implement in navigation okay so mm, do you have any questions till now if not then we will take a short 5 minute break and after that uh, we will be having a demo session in which i will be showing you a real robot that can do all these things okay so we'll have a demo session of this so until now any questions uh sir so someone has the question uh, how to get urdf and how to add parameters Yeah, so we will be seeing that in the demo session. Okay, it's like uh, after five minutes, or we'll take a ten to fifteen minutes of break, and then we will see that. Yeah, I, and I, I, he also asked, uh, can you repeat the locomotion part? Uh, I guess he understood. Okay, no. yeah, he just messaged. He understood. Okay, okay, fine. any other questions or else we can take a break short break it's like 5:30 ra oh yes so we can uh, join after 5 minutes okay uh, let's uh, take 15 minutes because i have to assemble all the demo session so take a 15 minutes break we will get back at 5:45 is that okay yes i guess it, that's okay okay sir so sure. see you all at 5:45 sir yeah okay uh what we have Somebody to stay asked? 
uh, you can like have a break you can go drink water or do anything but get back in 15 minutes okay
Hello, Karan, are you there? Oh, yes, I'm there. Uh, can you please grant permission access to Rigbitter Labs uh, user? I have gone uh, to screen, uh, share my screen over there. Uh, sir, uh, what are the names like for that? Rig can you message Rigbitter me? Rigbitter Labs. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, sure. I will. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, sir. Is my screen visible, Karan? Oh, yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So let me know when to start. Once, once everybody joins, then you can start, okay? Uh, so we can start, I guess. Uh, it's 5.40 my song. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we saw some uh, specific things like how we can design a robot and uh, we learned about what is navigation and localization of the robot. So uh, these all things come into consideration when we are making an autonomous robot using ROS. Okay, so here we have a robot that actually uh, works on the same principle. Okay, we have made a robot that can be controlled. Uh, like we, if we give it a position that it has to go, it will think on its own and it will go over there autonomously. Okay, and these kind of robots are used in uh, logistics companies and warehouses, as well as in autonomous driving cars. There are similar algorithms that are being used. Okay, so um, we at Rigbitter Labs we uh, consult many companies for similar kind of project, and while we were working so uh, there. We understood that many students that we uh, used to collaborate with, we used to hire, or, uh, they used to do internship for us. They used to not be able to implement it on real robots, okay? Because they were just making a simulation or something kind of that. So just so that every student um, gets the hands-on experience on a real robot, that's the reason we made this uh, sort of what playground, which you can book an appointment for free from our website, and then you can. Um, make your own code for this robot and you can control this robot from anywhere in the world okay so i will give you a quick demo of it so whenever I book an appointment uh, on our website for this so you will be sent this documentation which includes all the details about uh, the robot and the playground okay 
so let's see uh, like how like how to start with okay so first we will be connecting to the robot so why we are connecting to the robot so right now i'm controlling a laptop that is uh, over here and now from here we will be talking to the robot that is over there in the real world so you can see it over here okay so for that we will type ssh and then uh, ssh is a secured connection which, uh, which can be used between two devices and then we will give the user id of the uh, device so on the robot we are using a raspberry pi which is a small computer you can see so there the name is pi and then we will be giving the ip address of the pi okay so once we give that ip address enter it will ask for password so even the password is given on the documentation okay so i will type contrast so that is the password of the robot so this complete thing is based on ROS. okay ROS is robot operating system we'll learn more about it tomorrow but right now i, I just want to hype you up with all the things that are possible with ROS. so that's the reason i'm showing you okay so the first thing that is possible using ROS and which is widely used in ROS is the ability of simulation so you can simulate real world robots into ROS. so right now uh, you can see there is a real robot in a real environment but what, let's say you don't have it. You don't have enough money to make the robot. You don't have enough resources to do it. So you can simulate it. So here we have created a simulation of the same robot. Okay. So for that we will uh, run a raw score. Okay. You don't need to understand this thing right now. Okay. We will be implementing this real time in a further workshop. But just understand it like right now. Just look at the physical possibility. Okay. And then we will launch this command on another terminal. So we'll be learning all this, like how to make these commands, everything we will be learning further. Okay. So once I uh, run this command, it will start up the simulation. Okay. So let's wait for it. So here we have a simulated environment which is accurate to the real robot as well. So if I open up the camera over here. If you see, it is very accurate to the original position of everything. So right, uh, just like in here over here, we have these symbols. Similarly, we have over here. The robot over there, we have a robot here. So everything is like a simulated environment. It's like real itself. Even if you just, uh, you can pick up anything. If I pick up this robot and if I drop it like this, it will fall because of gravity. Okay, it can also fall like this. Okay, because it's like the gravity, I can move it around. If I want to move these particle, uh, small boxes, I can move them around. Okay, so each and everything, I will uh, reset this. So this is how uh, we can simulate the environment, okay? And in simulation, there is one more thing that you can do is uh, just like real robot, you can control a real robot. Similarly, in simulation also, you can control the robot. So I will show you one thing, how you can control the robot. So all the commands that are required to do it is given on this documentation. Okay. And we will be also learning this in the workshop. So let's start the simulation again because this point is the position of it. So here is the simulation and now if I want to control the robot there is this command okay and using this command I can move the robot around so see I am able to move this forward okay so there are specific keys to control the robot here are all the keys given I can press K to stop the robot then I can rotate the robot and I can move it like this 
so i am controlling it manually right now and but this is just the simulation okay uh, but it behaves like a real world so here i can also increase the speed of the robot so let's say here i am increasing the speed so if i increase it your robot will behave like this it will go and uh, like hit something can even fall so this is like a real physics world but instead of uh, you spending anything on the hardware you can work on this simulation okay and this consists of the real robot model so just like in uh, the real robot has all the components here also we have given all the specific components that it uses so as i told the robot had a raspberry pi so even here you can see there is a raspberry pi model the robot even has a camera in front of it so you can see the camera over here so it's an accurate model of the robot and this is being generated using urdf okay so this robot was first made into a designing software cat designing software known as fusion 360 and using that there is a plugin called as fusion 360 using that plugin you can convert the cat model into urdf so that converts it into your as some of question was this previously so this is how you convert into your idea and then you give physical parameters like the friction of the wheel and what is the rpm of the wheels rpm of the motors that are used that you are using everything you have to specify and once that with that do that then you can make a world like this and control your robot around but this is like very much accessible to everyone right now because it is being very easy nowadays to do simulation but what if you want to work on a real robot so now what we will do is instead of controlling it through a simulation we will control a real robot okay so for that if you go back to the documentation there are two commands that are given so this we have to run on a raspberry pi terminal so this terminal presents to raspberry pi Okay, so I will paste it over here. You can see it's a Raspberry Pi written over here. That means it is a Raspberry Pi terminal. So now, uh, here in the camera, you can see there is a lidar at the top of the robot. It's not moving, but once everything is loaded, it will start rotating. So this means that the robot has started, and all uh, the sensors on the robot has initialized. so once this initiate uh, initialization of the robot sensor is done then we have to start the server so the server is needed for the robot to be able to control the real robot so we will run it over here and we enter okay. now similarly in the way in which i control uh, control the simulated robot similarly i can control this robot as well so the same command i will run and the using the same keyboard command i can control the real robot oh uh, hello sir yes oh uh, so can you repeat the name of software and the plugin uh, that you used fusion 360 so if you want to know more about it i have also made a uh, youtube video about it so if you go to youtube.com/transitopia Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over here there is a robot making robot URDF. Okay. So this was a live stream in which I used Fusion 360, and this complete robot was then converted into URDF. Okay. So the whole process is being showed over here. And after converting into URDF. Then in second live stream we also like moved it around in Gazebo. So it was somewhere around here. So in the same see the robot was moved into Gazebo. So here uh, we can control the robot. Okay. Hi Pranshu, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have few questions. Uh, so you said that uh, 
in ros it will be uh, simulating the real world and what about the losses that happen no. in real world even though you add no. uh, load see see uh, gazebo is the simulator arvis is visualizing too okay yes so ha huh, so we are simulating it in gazebo and all the losses that you so- said na so all mm-hmm. these parameters have been included in the simulation so if i open okay. up a simulation file okay so this mm-hmm. is a file which takes the laser readings okay so i will open this up so in this uh we have added noise over here can you see uh i can't see so anything see. Uh, the can screen is frozen the screen? Okay, now i can see how is good okay 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 so here i have added noise to it mm-hmm. okay so similarly for each and every physical parameter we can add so, okay so even uh, i will show you one more thing mm, physics if i go in physics i have added wheel friction i have added yes. uh, even there are some uh, yeah gravity i have kept it true self colliding capabilities it is true even in the world okay if we go into world let me open up so if i have my own robot uh, how do i create a urdf file and how do i uh, recognize what losses to be like what noise or whatever things real world environment uh, parameter should be added yeah. how do i decide that if you check the live stream i have mentioned like how you can convert it into urdf okay and even in gazebo i have uh, in the second video i have mentioned how you can add those physical parameters to the robot uh, okay do you mean on your youtube channel yes on the youtube channel yes. okay okay great yeah. thank you so here you can see yeah welcome so here i have added friction in u1 and u2 constant and mm-hmm. there are more physical parameters as well uh, see uh, i have like not enabled the wind okay yes. because i don't want that but if yeah. you want you can make this zero as one and make it uh, make the wind the normal i have added gravity also so gravity is accurate thing minus 9.8 okay minus because it's in downward direction that's the reason it's minus yes. okay yes so and i have added mag- there is magnetic field as well okay the atmosphere type is adiabatic so all these physical parameters you can add okay if you are working with a uh, gpu name for the youtube you add pranshu tople you can just search my name okay um pranshu what, what what would happen if i have a industrial robot such as abb uh-huh. or yamaha so how do i uh, Yes. and if i don't have a urdf file for it uh, do you have any suggestions on how i can create uh, a ros uh, and gazebo environment for it all all these industrial robots do have their urdf files so if i search okay. abb robot urdf okay mm-hmm. see abb manipulators ros so you can okay. go over here yeah okay so thank you thank all you all the industrial robots, yeah all these industrial robots are now working on ros because the ros is right now the industrial standard that yes that will be in the future. yes yeah. so here great there are tutorials for it yeah so you can okay. refer to these okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thank you for for specific thank you hi chaitan who is well thank you thank you very much yeah uh, good good evening first of all and uh, very nice you are explaining uh, my is a question uh, my question in my mind uh, when you uh, you uh, uploaded the youtube videos for the uh, for the train of fusion synthetic model in the ro- in fusion synthetic model uh, of robotics of robot so uh, i would uh, you correct the microcontroller kit microcontroller drivers stepper motors so how to uh, code it basically if, uh, if i don't know idea so i have to code it it's it, it, then then like you know so i have to code it and then i have to perform some connections to it so that it will run properly yes 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 yeah so so oh, nice. so, so for that uh, i need some course so i have to interface the course and the connection 
how to see the simulation where is the uh, how to see uh, running properly so what should what should i do so the basic idea of this game will be given to you in the workshop i will be showing you how things are interfaced over here but okay. the exact coding and everything won't be mentioned in this workshop okay uh, if you want to know more about it you can just put a uh, on the rigbeta labs website okay uh, sorry which which if you go to if you go to rigbetalabs.com okay there is a place where we stay uh, like There is a place for consultation. If I go over here, okay. Either you can book an appointment of auto is what playground over here, or you can uh, apply for boss mentorship program. Uh, it's R I G B E T E L. Just a minute, I will show you the home page. You can uh, search this Rick Bittle Labs. Okay, Rick Bittle Labs. so this is the website so over here you can apply for the ross mentorship program in that in, we will be covering more, much more in detail so right now this workshop is just for 3 days and also for free so we cannot cover everything in this but i will be trying to cover most of the part but if you want to learn more then definitely you can apply for the mentorship program okay thank you so i will get back to the demonstration because we are almost uh, yeah so if you check back on the real robot okay we were controlling the robot around so i can move the robot around but this doesn't feel uh, like uh, anything fancy so what you can do is you can visualize the sensors on the robot so one sensor that we have is a camera based sensor okay so these are like the eyes of the robot if you want to see that i will just uh, copy paste this command okay and here you will see the view from the camera so i will also open up the robot over here so this is the live feed okay so if i move the robot around uh, just a minute here yeah. yeah. So this is the live feed from the robot. So you are able to see what the robot sees. So this is how you can see what the exact robot is seeing. And apart from that, we have a lidar at the top of the robot. So what is the function of the lidar is to make a 2D map of the surrounding, okay, or uh, like it sees whatever else are there in the obstacles, uh, whatever obstacles are there in your surrounding. So to view that, we will also launch this command. Okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir, uh, but I think your screen has frozen. Okay. Yeah. Is it visible now? hello uh yeah hello, now we can see the rvs window uh, but still there is ah. a lag uh, there is a bit lag in this okay okay so right now i am also like streaming itself na so maybe there is some lag okay but uh, no problem uh, if you want to see this uh, like mm, real uh, like in first hand so you can book a free appointment on the website okay so there is a free appointment you can access anytime anywhere uh, depending upon the availability of slot so you can book a slot it is completely free and you will be able to control this robot from your home 
So at that time there won't be lag because we're using a, a like a fast internet connection for it. So definitely check that out. Okay. So here I will be like now controlling the robot, and you can see this red dots. So these red dots are the uh, are the lidar readings. Okay. So if I move the robot around, the lidar reading stays the same. Just a minute. We'll move it around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this lidar, the lidar reading is moving just because it is the robot is not getting the exact position. But once it gets, then it comes becomes stable. If I move it a little bit, yeah, yes. But these are some of the noise that is being created. But when we create an actual map of the surrounding, that time these uh, noise doesn't affect. So for this specific thing, I will show you how to create the map of the surrounding. Okay. So we'll stop this complete process right now, and I will show you how to make the map. Okay. So if I go over, down over here, there is this command for generating the map. Okay. So first I will start the server. And then on another terminal, I will start this mapping procedure. And just a minute, I started the wrong command. Yeah, this is the correct one. Yeah. So, can you see this uh, gray and black map, or is it frozen? Uh, so yeah, you, it just showed like there was a bit lag in there. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. So see, this is like the uh, robot is a, being able to see these many points right now. It cannot see behind this obstacle or over down, and it cannot see over the obstacle which is on its uh, right hand side. Okay, so right now the robot is only able to see this now. So what we will do is we will move the robot around. So that it gets to understand more about its surrounding. So I will move the robot a little bit in the back direction. Okay. And as the robot uh, like moves and it gets confidence about the surrounding, the map become more and more white in color. Okay. So here now you can see it's being able to see a little bit behind this obstacle. So we will take it over here. There can be some lag, but uh, we have no option right now. So if you want to check out on the real robot, we can also see that. Okay. So it's like this, okay. As you see, it's creating a map of the surrounding and that too very accurately. So uh, even right now, this is like a trapezium shaped obstacle. So if you move it ahead even a little bit more, it will be able to recreate that complete trapezium shape. Okay. So this was a really small map. So we, the resolution of this map is really low. But this method is being used to create large maps of the complete warehouses and so there you will get a very accurate map of the surrounding. So once this map is being made, this map is being saved on a robot. Okay. So on the memory of robot, we have a copy of this map. And then uh, whenever the robot is directed to move somewhere, uh, we use this map to move around. Okay. So I will show you how the robot thinks on its own and move around in the scenario. So right now I'm taking it to the home position of the robot.
Okay. So now we will be doing autonomous navigation. So this was just mapping. So once the robot ma a map is being made, we can save the map using this command. We already have it saved. So just jump onto the navigation. Yeah. Uh, I will put it over here. So here we have some important parameters that we should check before doing anything. Okay. So can you see the commands, uh, the, the words written over on the left side? Can you read it? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. So first I will just hide everything. Okay. Mm. And show you one by one. So first of all, we have nothing but the map of the surrounding. This was the map which was generated previously. Okay, so uh, this map contains a gray area where it is the robot can move, and also it contains black points which are the walls or obstacles. So here you can see the obstacle that is in the front of the robot, and this is in the left side of the robot. Apart from that, we have the robot model itself. So just like in simulation, there was real robot model. Similarly, here also we have a robot model. Okay. Next thing uh, we have is the transform of the robot. So transform is like the connection between the different joints of robot. Okay. So if I reduce, like if I scale down a little bit, if I make it smaller, yeah. So these are the different joints of robot between different parts of the robot. Okay. Next thing we have is the laser scan. So we have a lidar at the top of the robot, right? So that creates the laser scan. So this green color is the live laser scan. Okay. Next we have the planner plan. This will come when we give it a look uh, goal, and for goal we have we give it from here. Okay. And I will just reduce it a little bit. Okay. Now we have a global map. So what does this global map mean? Is it has the map of the complete area, and uh, uh, this blue color is the place where the robot can uh, will avoid to go. It's like very close to the wall, right? So this blue area is where it will avoid to go, and this pink area tells that okay, it can go over there, but try to avoid it. Okay. So it's like a medium zone, you can say. So around all the obstacles, it has created uh, some points like these, okay. and these are very necessary because, uh, or else if the inflation, like uh, the map is not proper, so the robot will not go properly anywhere. Then we have local map. So local map is like uh, right now the robot is standing over here. It only has to take into consideration these two. Uh, what to say? These two obstacles. This robot doesn't have to uh, take uh, tension of any ball in the behind because robot is over here. So it shouldn't affect the balls in the back. Shouldn't affect the robot motion. So if the robot goes over here, it will take these walls into consideration. We will see this when we give it a goal. Okay. So now let's give this robot a goal and let's see how it goes. Okay. I will close this. I will just keep the local path. So this is like what the robot cares about right now, and also I will start a video so that you will see how the robot is doing. Okay, so I will make it always on top. If I now tell this robot to go over here, so and I will tell that be in this direction. Okay, so the robot will start going over there autonomously, and it will try to look over to this direction once it go over there. Okay, so see. This local map is moving along with the robot. So what does it say? Is like, ha, we, uh, it has to consider these walls which are around. And once it is reached, it will show uh, like this. And even in terminal, we can see it says goal reached. Okay, here you can see it says goal reached. Similarly, you can give any location. So if I tell to go it over here, so it will try to go around this obstacle. So now I will do one thing. I will Change the location of the obstacle and see how it reacts. Okay.
So if I keep an obstacle over here, now it's changing the direction. Okay. So now the robot is changing the path, and now it's going over the thing. Yeah, now it's reached. Now we can give some other goal. Let's say over here. The robot is going like this. I kept an obstacle like this. Now it will try to move around that obstacle. But the robot is finding its own path. And that path you can see using the black line. Is my screen lagging a lot? Uh, yes, sir, actually yes. it's uh, lagging. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm, fine, I will try to... Uh, like Right now there is no other option in which I can show you because this is the only way we can show it to you. Mm. But do you understand the basic concept behind it? Because uh, even if uh, you are able to see this much right now, but you can book an appointment, which is completely free of cost. You don't have to pay and you get a 40 minute uh, session. So if you go to rigbitterlabs.com, you can book a session and there you will get a pop-up saying for the free trial of the tortoise bot playground. You can book a slot. Whatever time you are comfortable and date. So you can book over here and choose any time you are comfortable with. If not this, if you don't have enough time to do that also. So even on YouTube, we have released a video of it. So even on YouTube, you, you can search. If you search for Pranchito Play. This was the video that we recently did about tortoise bot playground. I think my screen is again lagging. I will stop this robot right now. Yeah, so this was the screen that we've done. Okay. And in this screen, we have showed you how exactly the tortoise bot works and what all things you can do with it. Okay. So the thing which I was trying to show you right now, we have shown you over here. Okay. So, so I, I guess, sir, uh, I guess like uh, many of them have seen this, but uh, they are not like getting like what actually the laser scanner is or uh, what is uh, Arvis and because like they are not okay, familiar okay, with this. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I just showed you this today just to get you an idea to what all things Ross can do. Okay. So we uh, I obviously get that you won't be understanding what is laser scanner, how Arvis works. So everything we will be covering into this two days workshop. So in this two days workshop, I will be showing you how exactly Ross work, uh, what is Arvis, what is Gazebo. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Oh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, sir, you are okay. audible. I am saying that in these two days workshop, we will be considering all these things and we will be also implementing it on the, uh, your machine. So if you have Ubuntu 18.04 installed on your PC, may it be using virtual machine or using any other thing, we will also cover that into the workshop. Okay. So yeah, this will get the files. What? Uh, what? Uh, will we get the files for them? Yes, yes, you will be getting files for this. Uh, when so someone also asked, uh, what, is, uh, what is the path planning algorithm that you are using in this? So the path planning algorithm that I'm using is called as DWA planner. D for a dog, W for uh, wealth, and uh, A for apple, so DWA. Okay. 
so it's a algorithm that uh, that is complicated but um, we won't be covering that into uh, this workshop but at least i will tell you basic how everything work together as we are short on time i have to cover the complete workshop thing so yeah so this was it yes sir, sir. And yes karan you can take over uh yeah so so i was just saying like you can continue if anyone has any questions so like we can uh, ask that uh, we can do that at the end of this yeah yeah so th- uh, that was it from my side right now i wanted to show the demo and that's it and uh, in tomorrow session we will understand what is ross and we will see all the tools that are being used in ross which we saw right now like gazebo arbis what are those things we will see that tomorrow and after that we will be implementing it and we will be installing it ross and okay uh, okay sir i hope that us uh, yeah someone asked uh, like uh, ross noetic is the latest and lts version of ross uh, then why are we using ross melodic what is the difference between them okay so the ross noetic is the latest version of ross yes and also yes it is lts version but it is not yet stable okay so most of the packages uh, that are being used right now for path planning navigation not each and every package is used on noetic so if you are a beginner in ross it's always recommended to uh, start with the previous version of ross because uh, it is easier for you to get resources over it so right now ross noetic resources are very less okay also there are all the packages that are needed for ross is not developed on ross noetic so that's the reason it's always recommended to start with a step backward thank you sir you are welcome because it's not stable so if you run into any problem it will be very difficult uh, to solve so that's the reason Are there any other doubt? Uh, in official website of Ford yes. Bot, some other control, control instead of Arduino Mega. Uh, what's the difference if we okay. use uh, Mega with them? Uh, your voice is cracking, man. I didn't understand your question. Can you repeat? Uh, uh, in official Turtle Bot uh, website, we use some other microcontrollers instead of uh, Arduino Mega. What's the difference in them? Mm-hmm. also the difference is just that ki uh, arduino doesn't have enough processing power to take the all sensor data and process it okay so they use the microcontroller by intel it's called as op- open cr board which is by intel so it is another microcontroller that is the, like it has higher frequency rate okay and if you want to make your own you can use tnc microcontroller you can use esp microcontroller or even you don't need, even need a microcontroller if you have a microprocessor on your robot even that is enough so here the robot which i showed it doesn't have a microcontroller it only works completely on raspberry pi oh, okay i got it is uh, node mcu is also used with the the microcontroller yes yes that is what i said esp so that that's the same node and see are there any other questions yes sir i have one question yes, uh, regarding fusion 360 uh, sir i designed yeah. the turtle bot in fusion 360 and my wheels is getting cut on y axis i don't know why it is happen as a resize my robot Up to, up to the origin, as you said in your video, but uh-huh. it's not happening in yeah. URDF. It a forty-five percent wheel is get cut. I don't know why. This can you tell me the solution? Uh, after this workshop, man, just uh, like give uh, send me a mail with the files that you have. Let me check what is the error. Okay. Yes, sir, sure. I already did. Just check this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. What's your name? Sir Aditya. What's your name? 
Okay, okay, fine. I will check it. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes. Bro, I too have a doubt from uh, Fusion 360. I uh, converted a model to uh, like a uh, four, four wheel robot and a uh, designer four wheel robot and I converted to Fusion 360 using URDF. Uh, it worked mm -hmm. fine, but I wanted to uh, reduce the size of the wheels. Then I went to the same design mm -hmm. and I, I just changed the size of the wheel and uh, slightly moved the model to the uh, make sure that all the wheels are grounded. And I again converted the uh, mm -hmm. URDF files, but uh, the second time creator files, it's not working fine. What could be the reason? So see, uh, whenever you run fusion to URDF once, okay, so it creates a duplicate of the body, okay. So maybe you have already those duplicates in your file existing. So what you can yeah, do is uh, first yeah. delete those. What what I yeah, whenever uh, I am converting from Fusion to URDF, uh, uh, copy of the components will be created. No, I will be uh, clearing okay. all that uh, as soon as uh, completing it to URDF. I done the, okay. that. Okay. Uh, okay. Next thing is uh, when you change the dimension of the wheel, did you change it in the component state or the body state? In the component state. Huh. So that's the problem. So when you change it into component state, so you are changing what was initially as a body. So if you watch my tutorial, so in that I have mentioned that everything, whenever it is editable, it should be in bodies. And once in bodies, then only convert it into component and then uh, move the, uh, like make it into your idea. So all the editing stage should be done when it is in body. Yeah, okay. To convert to URDF, we have to do it component wise or we can do it for assembly? Uh, like you, you have to first make the complete robot in bodies. Then the complete robot should be converted into component in which you have to join those components. And then you have to just uh, click the fusion to URDF plugin and then it will convert. So the process is on the editable stage should be done into bodies. After bodies are converted into components, then you should not edit the model. That's the process. Okay. Uh, someone then, also uh, asked, I... what is the procedure Bro. to export from SolidWorks to Fusion 360 uh, and then export so, to ERDF? Yeah, yeah. so uh, you can export models from SolidWorks in form of step STP file. Okay. So if you convert into step file, you can import that step file into Fusion 360. And then you can convert it to URDF as it is. Okay. But there is also. And we do it directly from the SolidWorks to the yes. URDF file? Yes, yes, you can do that as well. I was saying the same thing. There is a plugin for SolidWorks as well, which says SolidWorks to URDF. You can even try it. What? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, did someone say anything, right? Bro, uh, I have a doubt. Uh, whenever I converting uh, from uh, Fusion to URDF, each and every time after uh -huh. converting, I need to scale that. Uh, it's always creating in the size of 0 0.001. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. It's not. It's not exactly in the size what I have designed. Each and every time after converting to yes. URDF, I'm uh, doing a uh, scaling manually. Is is that a problem in the plugin or uh, I have done mistake uh, in design? No, no. Listen, uh, that is being done purposefully. Okay, so that is being done because you are you doing it manually or is it in the URDF system? So it comes into scale 0 0.001, right? Yes. After yeah, converting, so as soon as I way export way. it, uh, it yes, comes it. into in the size. Uh, yes, yes. So it is the made that. Uh, purposefully so that we get accurate like more precise designs okay so we uh, actually in when while converting from fusion to urdf we rescale the model in a bigger model after that we convert it and then scale it down so what happens is we get more detailed of each and every body so you have to keep it 0 0.001 itself you don't have to make it one okay okay you have to keep it there 
No, uh, if the model is in 0.001, uh, when I try to uh, run a gazebo dot launch or display dot launch, uh, it is in the size of very small. I need to zoom it uh, very. Uh, it's in very minute in size. If, whenever I try, when after changing it, when see, when you created it in Fusion 360, do you keep the uh, dimensions in mm? No, oh, I kept in m meter. Uh -huh. So you have to keep it in MM. You have okay. to keep it in MM. Mm. Okay. okay, and I have another doubt. Uh, instead mm -hmm. of using this plugin, we can create our own URDF manually just by typing also, no? Yes, but that is a really, like, in that you can only create uh, cube cylinders, cuboid, and sphere. You can only create these four. Oh, what I'm saying is... Uh, we can just we are uh, using the step file uh, keep keeping it uh, getting a uh, creating a step file of the model or uh, sorry stl file of the model and uh, keeping it in the mess folder then uh, in mm -hmm. coming to the uh, urdf folder and uh, we are creating files like uh, zacro files for it mm -hmm. and importing it by giving uh, links like common geometry that initia everything uh, in the in the okay. time of importing in the origin we will be giving uh, zero 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 mm -hmm. in the joint uh, we'll be giving where it need to be joined or in the mm -hmm. like vice versa we'll be giving values uh, in any any sure. one of the, one of the side one only no yeah, yeah. but yeah. when so uh, we are, are using this plugin two values are coming mm -hmm. uh, if i try to change uh, even any any one of the value as per my requirements uh, it creates a lot of problem it's uh, dependent on uh, dependence are very more for this file how no, to change no. after so grading maybe, maybe you are maybe you are editing it in the wrong way so after the uh, workshop is over contact me personally i will help you out because uh, okay. it shouldn't be that difficult it is easy to edit it itself and the way you are saying that you can create the meshes then you can give the positions manually okay definitely you can do that but in that way you have to write the complete urdf script by your own okay so okay. and you have to calculate the inertia on your own. You have to calculate the collision on your own, and all the parameters you have to do it manually. So if you are, okay. uh, if you want to do it, you can definitely do it manually. But the uh, reason we are using plugin is just because it makes it easier. The computer handles all the calculation part, and it gives you the final output file. Okay. okay. Uh, why are trying to do it? it uh, why I'm trying to do it is manually because uh, after cre creating a model, then I want to add a new model into it. Uh, like uh, attach a small mm -hmm. part. If I forgot to add a part, like uh, consider yeah. uh, if I'm using mm -hmm. one leader, yeah. then uh, later I finalize yeah. that I want to use two leaders, uh, like front and back. Uh, just for example. Yes, yes, you can use so it. if I need, you can use it. It is easy to edit. So maybe the way you are editing it is not proper. So that's the reason okay. I said ki once the workshop is over, let's get connected and then I will help you edit it properly. Okay. Okay, bro. I have a, is there any proper hmm. procedure to add a, uh, if I forgot to uh, add a caster wheel in my model, but I have the STL mm -hmm. file of it, then uh, if, I, mm -hmm. if I want to add it or uh, if I have uh, consider to uh, two situations, I having a STL file and I don't have a STL file. So how could I add mm -hmm. the add that model into the existing already created UDF file? So considering you already have the STL file, you can keep that STL file into meshes folder and just the way you will connect any other link with your PC, you have to just con uh, like give the properties of the caster and add a joint between your base link and your caster. This is one method. And second method is if you don't have a model, if you don't have a model, then directly into the URDF file, you can create a sphere or a cylinder according to you, whatever type of caster you want. You can create that and you can join it with base link. And no. the third method is you can go into Fusion 360 or wherever you've designed the model, you can design the caster again and convert it and bring it. Even that is possible. Yep. So these three methods are easily doable if you do it in a proper way. Actually, method. I tried the third method as well as first method. It's creating mm -hmm. lots of problem uh, while running the model. So maybe, so maybe you are doing it the wrong way, okay? Because these three okay. models, uh, these three are completely doable. 
Okay, I myself have been okay. using it for uh, past one year, so I know. Okay. Okay. Because before one year, I used to make it manually itself, but the procedure was too long. Whenever we used to do for some industrial project, uh, okay. like last year in December, uh, like 2019, December 2019, I started using Fusion to UI. Okay. Thank you. Where do you uh, learn from it? Is only from official site? Is there any uh, other sites like uh, so uh, we could uh, learn still much deeper? Like uh, yeah, we are using only packages or pre-developed only. No, if we want to develop our own package or our use, even, uh, uh, if you, even for that, the tutorials are available on the official site. So I have learned my uh, everything from the official website itself. All you have okay. to do is just experiment and learn. Okay, and even yeah. from that itself. So I started using uh, Fusion 360 in December. I myself found very many flaws in that Fusion to UIDF plugin. So I edited it, and now even I have a commit to Fusion to UIDF in of July 2020. So even I have committed to that project. Okay. So, that's the beauty of ROS that it's everything is open source. If you are not happy with specific thing, you can change some specific things and publish. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Are there any other questions? Uh, I guess uh, like uh, everyone is like up till clear, but uh, still I think like they don't have actually idea like what all these things are. So I guess that will be covered in further workshops. Yes, yes. Oh uh, yeah, so. Okay, so uh, one last question. I guess we can take this. Uh, Tejas has does Fusion to 360 export textures? Uh, no, it doesn't export textures. But if you want, you can export it externally. Okay, so you can create your own textures either in any photo editing software or you can use Blender for that, and you can export textures from there. Okay, then I guess we can like uh, close it here. Uh, so uh, to all the attendees, like please install and keep open to 18.04 ready. Uh, so the server will be uh, teaching installation tomorrow of ROS melody. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I hope you are excited to learn this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir, so much. Yeah, no problem. We are welcome. Uh, so I will end this meet, right? Yeah. Okay.